So tell me, has this ever happened to you? You are staying up late editing? You're maybe laying on the couch, you're in bed, I don't know, maybe you're editing late on a road trip and it's dark and you're getting ahead with all your work and you're just like, I feel great about myself. These are all looking awesome. And then you wake up the next morning and you look at the images that looked awesome the night before and they look horrific. Now you have to do all that work all over again because your edits look horrible and you don't know why. So the question is, does the ambient light in the room around me when I'm editing really affect my editing? a lot to the point where I'm not happy with the edits. Is that really affecting me? And the second question is, if that is affecting me, then what is the best solution? What is the most ideal scenario for editing to make sure that I get accurate edits right off the bat? Or maybe more importantly, which environments should I avoid? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my laptop and some raw files and I'm going to take it around to different scenarios in my home and edit and see what the, the results are. So I did wanna mention that my computer settings are going to be the exact same throughout this whole experiment. And so that's important because I don't want you to think that we're testing out all these different display settings in all these different scenarios. That would be very confusing. However, we can do that in another video. Leave comments if that would be helpful. So, all right, so here we are, we're gonna do our first scenario. Um, we're, going, we're going to mimic uh, editing in the car. That's what we're gonna call this, editing in the car, which I do all the time, and it's pitch black. And sure, there's some like red lights, tail lights passing you, but for the majority of the car ride, there's a little glow maybe from the, like the radio or the screen in the car, but it's pitch black. So we're going to do that in this room. It's the darkest, most controlled room in the house, so we're going to just have a blackout here. And we've turned off all the lights. This is really dark in here. The only thing there's, uh, Tyler's laptop is simulating the glow of like the screen in the car. I really do feel like I could be in the car right now. So I'm just going to adjust, I'm going to edit this the way I normally do, which I, I actually am not hyper analyzing the number of the white balance. I normally am going off of what I see and not the exact number. So that's important because as I go from space to space, you need to know that I'm not just like remembering, oh, well the white balance from the basement was, you know, 64, 42. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not looking at that, um, and I'm gonna make sure that that's not something that I default to. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this thing um, in the darkness, um, which I just feel right at home because I edit a lot like this, especially on the way home from weddings. So as you know from the editing course, I'm doing brightness first, and I'm gonna start warming up, which I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go down here and add one of my step three in my preset process, which is cute. Okay, so think we're done. Maybe tone down the blues a little bit. I always have to do that. Okay, so I think this looks decent. We shall see how it compares in the grand scheme of things. All right, so same place. We're in a new scenario because we turned the lamps on in my studio. So we have a lamp here that's like a soft white LED, and then we have another lamp over there that's like a soft white LED. So it's bringing this like um, warm, cozy, nighttime light. This is the only room, it's the middle of the day right now. So this is the only room that has no windows in our house. And so um, we're replicating nighttime editing on the couch. This is what we call the editing on the couch scenario, the couch edit. So the couch edit is you're editing at night. Maybe the only other thing that would make this a little bit more, more realistic if like Netflix was on on the screen, on the TV screen. But um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to edit in this environment. Very different than being in the pitch black. I have some other lights that are affecting me and um, we're gonna see what I come up with. So I'm not gonna have you watch me do all these edits. I'm gonna get, that would be very repetitive, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna edit this again, um, and then you're going to see all the edits at the end. So let's go ahead and do the couch edit. Okay, so now we are in a different setting. We are in an office that is a lot of natural light with, we're underneath a porch, so there's no direct light hitting, which is great. Um, I'm gonna call this the office edit. This is the most ideal place to edit, in my opinion. I do have a little bit of reflection, but honestly, my body is blocking that from the screen. So I am, oh, and the walls are neutral. So the ceiling's neutral. So a lot of the ambient environment is a pretty neutral setting to get an accurate edit. So I'm gonna edit this photo in this setting. Again, we'll call this the office edit, and we'll see how it compares to the couch edit and the car edit. Okay, so welcome to my last location. I'm gonna call this the Starbucks edit. And you might think, why in the world would anybody choose to edit right here in bright light? But a lot of people, you probably do this sometimes. You're just underneath a little umbrella where your back's in the sun, but there's a lot of bright light. Um, I, don't, I can barely even see my screen, but some people edit like this. And so I'm gonna to try to edit in this situation with like the white table blasting in my face. We'll just see what happens. So here we go, the Starbucks edit. I'm just kind of like, I'm like blindly doing this. I'm just doing adjustments I normally do and hoping for the best. We are back. 
and we have results. So let's go to my computer screen. Let's look at the differences between these four different editing environments and see what my final edits look like and what the takeaway is. All right, so the first, first up, I'm gonna just show you, I'm sliding it over here. You're seeing the edit from the car. So this is no light except my computer screen. It was like a pitch black environment. And at first glance, it's like, oh, that's okay. It's not. Then look at this image. What the skin tones are way warmer. It does have a slight green undertone. This was the edit, uh, which I call the couch edit, that just had some indoor lamp ambient light. Um, so a lot of warm light was around me. And I think that's why I potentially missed a little bit of the yellow tones here that could have been adjusted. But this is way closer to a final edit than the car edit. The car edit I look at and I'm like, I guess when I was editing in the dark, it was so dark that this all seemed warmer than it really was. So I edited it to be warm to the level where I thought it needed to be warm, but really it's way too cool. The skin tones look gray, especially um, this little guy. His face is is way too gray uh, and very blue in, the, in its tint. So um, yeah, not good. So let's keep moving on. Then I edited it in my office. In my office, the office edit, Remember, I had natural light around me, full brightness on my screen, no reflections. I was just editing with a lot of natural light. And I was able to tell that even though the edit from before, I, I did that, but I noticed that I wanted something else to make it a little softer in terms of skin tone, to take away a little bit of the yellow hue and add a little bit more of pink tones back in. So I added 10% color grading to this final image. So the difference between here and here is that this has a little less of the yellow green undertone. Um, okay, and then this edit was the outdoor edit in the bright sun. Now I will say, this is not my favorite edit. I don't like the skin tone here. I think their faces look a little bit green compared to like this final edit that I love. It wasn't a horrible edit, but by that time I had edited this four times and I was kind of guessing because I couldn't see anything. So I do feel like I guessed a little bit on this last one. Like I know that it's around this range, but in general, if I had started from an image from scratch outside in that bright sun, uh, I, I don't think that would have gone very well. So this was better than I anticipated. Um, the car was way too blue. Now, you might say, well, this is great, but like, what do I do? Can I never edit unless I'm in a perfectly natural lit office? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I, I do think the solution to this is that no matter where you're editing, we need to have a gauge on what skin tones are appropriate that we know that we like, that we could use. So I would create for yourself, find your images that you've shot, you've seen on iPhones, you've seen on multiple computers, maybe they're on your portfolio. Um, you know you like that edit, like you know you like that skin tone. And create a cluster of five to 10 images that have skin tones that are in the range of your style and what you like to produce. And save that as a PDF on your desktop. You can even make it your the background of your desktop. So you can constantly reference back and know that if you're editing in the car and it's pitch black, you know that, that that color in that PDF, that skin tones guide that you create, you know that those skin tones are accurate. You know that in the middle of the day, you're going to like what those skin tones are because you always, you, you've you seen the final image, they've been around the block. So I would say create your own skin, skin tones guide. And when you're in settings where you're unsure, reference back to those skin tones so you know that you're on the right track. And it, mean, it may mean that you're editing at night in the car and you're like, once you pull up that skin tones guide and you're comparing, you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm so off. Is that, could that be right? It probably is. Because remember that skin tones guide you created is accurate in any other setting. So edit to your skin tones guide. And that way, when you're in the middle of the day and you're looking back at the work you did, you're going to be so much closer to being on the right track. I actually have a skin tones guide um, that you could download. I'm going to put in the notes below um, that I've kind of done this work for you. If you like my style, if you like the range of edits that I provide to my clients, you might like my guide and you can use it as a reference range. It's a quick and easy solution for this because in general, I could say, Oh, make sure all your lights are at a certain temperature when you're editing, but that's not controllable. You can't control that. So let's, control what we can, which is internally, control something as a guide on your computer to where no matter where you are, if you pull up that reference guide, you know that you're on the right track. So in conclusion, I think that what I learned in all this is that, um, you know, editing in the car is not my the best use of my time. And I knew that but this confirmed it. So, um, so I think it will be a good reminder for me that I can call, I can do emails in the car, but editing is just, 
that's just not ideal. And it makes sense why I'll edit some sneak peeks really quick on the drive home and then I see them on Instagram the next day and I'm like, oh my gosh, do I get rid of all the comments and the likes and the engagement in order to fix the, the white balance? Part of me, sometimes I do that because I just can't stand to see it. So that will save you a lot of frustration if you just know, don't edit in the car and expect you to, to love the edits the next day. So I hope this was helpful. Anyone who's been struggling with this and has never considered how your environment plays into your final edits, maybe this has been an eye-opening episode and I hope you enjoyed it. If you really enjoyed it and you want to see more um, in regards to editing, Lightroom, anything, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you and I hope you will like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.